that negative 729 is equal to negative k minus 24 to the 3 halves. Okay, I will reiterate this one more time. You cannot distribute that negative into those parentheses. All right, so our first step is to divide both sides by negative 1. So we get positive 729 is equal to k minus 24 to the 3 over 2. So we raise that to the reciprocal power. So we raise both sides to the 2 thirds. So that is the cube root of 729 squared. Okay, we're only going to have one solution because we are taking an odd root, the cube root. So the cube root of 729, we just used it. It was 9. 9 squared is 81. And that's equal to k minus 24. So we have one more step. We need to add 24 to both sides. So that gives us 105 is equal to k. Again, please, 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 please be in the habit of checking these solutions. I'm going to continue to be sarcastic. And if you ask me, is this right? I'm going to say, well, you can check it. Okay? There's no reason why you should ask me that question on equations because if you want to know whether it's right, you just need to plug it into your calculator. Okay? Now, if you plug it into your calculator and something doesn't match up, then yeah, sure, I'll come over and I'll help you figure out maybe what you didn't type into the calculator correctly. But that needs to be your first step. Okay? Uh, just to ask me, is this right? Okay. Example B. Notice the difference here. No parentheses like there were parentheses in the previous problem. So it may be helpful for a lot of you to kind of box um, the variable to realize that's what I've got to get by itself. Okay, that's what I've got to get by itself before I apply the reciprocal power to both sides. So in this case, we need to add 6 to both sides. So we get 972. Then we divide by 4. And that's what? Thank you. 243. Thank you. Okay, so now we have the variable with that exponent isolated. So we're going to apply the reciprocal power to both sides, the three-fifths power. So that says m is equal to the fifth root of 243 cubed. Okay, odd root, one solution. That should be kind of a process you go through every single time. So I think that should be three. 3 to 243 is 3, and 3 cubed is 27. Have you noticed something? All of our answers are perfect whatever, cubes, fourths, fifths, whatever they are. Um, so if you get to the point in your problem where you're having to take the fifth root of something or the cube root of something, and it's not a perfect fifth or a perfect cube, then you need to go back and, and see if you've got a mistake somewhere in your work um, because these should all be perfect, whatever they need to be, okay? Something's wrong if they're not. All right, <clears throat> two more. Let's throw some really complicated ones in there. I have a lot of stuff going on, but we can handle it because we are math masters. I'm getting you there. Okay? So 719 is equal to 3 times 2n plus 69 to the 5 thirds minus 10. Anytime you're solving an equation, your first step should be adding and subtracting. Bless you. You do the order of operations in reverse. So adding and subtracting is the last thing you do when you're simplifying something. So it's the first thing you do when you're solving. So we want to add 10 to both sides. So we get 729 equal to 3 times 2n plus 69 to the 5 thirds. Then we divide by 3. You cannot put that 3 inside those parentheses. I might be tempted to strangle you if you do. Is that 243? Yeah, 
because I've now said it about 50 times. <clears throat> no, not quite that many. At least 20. All right. Now, the expression with the variable is isolated. Um, so we can apply the three-fifths power, the reciprocal three-fifths power. So we have the fifth root of 243 cubed is equal to 2n plus 69. Is that not what we just did? Yes, we did. That is 27. Just using the previous problem, you can break it down into two steps there if you really want to, but I'm just going to take what I've already done. Might as well, right? Um, subtract 69 from both sides. So that is negative 42. How did I do that so easily? 69 minus 27, just take a negative in front of it. Equal 2n, divide both sides by 2, we get negative 21. What did I tell you about being very careful? If you get a negative solution, you should most definitely check that one. Okay? Um, we should check them anyways, but we should definitely check it if it's negative. Make sure it's good. All right. And it is. Okay, it is good. It does give us 719. All right. Last example. Here's another one with fractions in it. So we'll do a little fraction review here. We have negative 81 over 8 is equal to negative 10 minus 2 times 9r plus 1 to the negative 2 thirds. Do not add that negative 10 and that negative 2. Okay, the negative 2 is times what's that there in parentheses, so multiplication comes before addition and subtraction. You cannot put those two together, so we need to solve by first adding 10 to both sides. Well, negative 81 over 8, yes, your calculator will do this one with no problem, but I'm going to do it anyways by hand because a lot of you looking to the future, you need to know how to do this without a calculator. Okay, we're adding 10 to negative 81 over 8. It needs to be over 8, so we multiply it by 8 over 8. That gives us negative 81 plus 80, that's negative 1 8. And okay? negative 81 over 8 plus 10 is negative 1 8. Fractions are involved, so instead of dividing by negative 2, I'm going to multiply by negative 1 half. It's the exact same thing, guys. Dividing by negative 2 is the exact same thing as multiplying by negative 1 half, because negative 1 half times negative 2 is positive 1. That makes it go away like it's supposed to. So that gives us positive 1 over 16. Multiplying fractions, just straight over the top, straight across the bottom, and multiply. I feel like I did one time step. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I've done so far? Okay. <clears throat> now what do we do? Raise it to the reciprocal power. We're not multiplying by negative three halves. We are raising it to the reciprocal power. So, when we do that, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone right here. It's a negative exponent, so that's going to flip the 1 over 16 over, so that just gives us 16. It's the square root, and it's being cubed, okay? It was a negative power, so I flipped it over. That's why it's now 16 and not 1 over 16. Power over root, so 3 is the power, the square root. What do we have? Huh, I'm sorry? Yes? It was a positive 1 over 16, because it was negative 1 half times negative 1 half. Okay, now what do we have to remember if we take an even root? We've got two answers. So we need to split this into two right now. 
We've got positive 4 cubed, the square root of 16 being positive 4, cubed that, so that's equal to 9r plus 1, and then we have the negative 4, the negative square root of 16 cubed is equal to 9r plus 1. So 4 cubed is 64. Solve these equations, 63 is equal to 9r. That says 7 is equal to r for our first one. For the other one, we get negative 64 is equal to 9r plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides, negative 65 equals 9r. Divide that by 9. Negative 65 is not even divisible by 9. I don't think. Do they have anything in common? No? Okay. Alright, they don't, so we leave it. Especially if you get two solutions, you should check them. So go back to the beginning. Negative 10 minus 2, parentheses, 9 times 7 plus 1. To the parentheses, negative 2 over 3. I think that's right. I'm pretty sure that's negative 81 over 8. It is. Okay. And then i got to go back in and try negative 65 over 9. <clears throat> to be honest, most of the time with these uh, rational exponents, most of the time uh, the solutions, we don't have many that we throw out on the rational exponents. It's mostly just with the square roots that you have solutions that you throw out. But I'd still check them, okay? I'd still check these because you never know. <clears throat>